In June 2021, I took a visit to Alex Steele's workshop to see if he would be able to make me a scotch-eyed barrel auger. This is a small hand auger or tea auger which makes holes in wood in which a wood peg can be driven in to help support timber frame structures. Alex showed me a number of different ways that an auger can be made and after just a few hours I walked away with the final piece. So now I'm back in the woods and it's time to see if this auger that Alec has made can hold up to the tasks that it's been designed for. Thanks for tuning in and let's dive into the episode. Welcome to my camp. For those that haven't seen it before, there's plenty of episodes on my channel of building the various Anglo-Saxon style, Viking inspired structures and just all sorts on there. Um, head out to the links below or just check out my channel and you'll see them on there. So today is the day that we're going to test out the hand auger, the barrel eye or scotch eyed barrel auger that Alec forged just a couple of weeks ago. It's taken a while for me to uh, get this video out there because I had a few previous ones, but we're finally here and I'm looking forward to putting it to the test. I've seen what it can do anyway in Alec's workshop um, on a drill, on a power drill, where he attached it before he made the barrel eye. So I know it can make a hole, but I've not seen it make a hole with the eye on itself. So this could be interesting. Welcome to the channel if you're new. My name is Mike and I do everything kind of bushcraft, outdoors, a bit of survival, a little bit of fishing and just fun in the outdoors. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and let's have fun. We've got some good food to cook up as well, but today we're going to be working on testing this. Look at these dudes. This is what I'm working on across the whole forest floor and you can almost hear them if I show you their nest in a minute. But yeah, they just go crawl all over you. you kind of get used to them after a while. There is, there is tons, like if I just go slowly. I'll just quickly show you their nest. I find these ants fascinating, mainly because they're the largest ant species here in the UK, but also because of the properties that they have and the history behind what humans, us humans used to use them for and what we learned from them, but here's their nest, look at this. That, my friends, is a pretty big, pretty big ant's nest. I'm here on the border of the forest. There's a ditch and that is about, if you're in the bottom of the ditch over there, it's about three to four feet high. But check this out. Look how many are there. They reckon there's about 400,000 in each colony. I'm not sure how they know that and who counted them, but they have epic battles across the forest with other ants, very territorial. This is the southern wood ant, by the way, Formica rufa, aptly named Formica due to the formic acid that they can spray from their abdomens when predators go near. You might be able to see it. Just watch them while I put my hand there. They raise their back up. You see that? He's spraying. You can't really see it there. If I did it from here, you might see it already. There you go. See them raise their. their oh, I can feel it on my hand. As I come near, they raise their. Ah, oh, they've gone nuts. Don't aggravate. I'm not. I'm not killing them, guys. I'm just showing you what they do. And you can feel the acid. I've got videos on my channel. Okay, now I've made them angry, but. Slightly distracted there, we'll leave them be. So what I've done is, you can see I've tapered this stick. So it's thin this end, goes up to thick that end, and that way it can go through the barrel eye, and as it goes on more, it gets more and more tight until it locks off there. And I've got an equidistant handle grip. So we're gonna try it on this piece of wood, actually, this log here. Pretty rotten, actually, but let's go for it. Alec made that point, that screw tip, really sharp and a little bit longer than my previous auger that I owned. But I think that's more beneficial because I can push it in. Look, it already goes in a fair amount and that gives me a greater chance for it to bite. So, moment of truth, let's just gently see if that screw's biting, which it is. Don't fail me now. 
Alex Auger. There's a test of your craftsmanship. There you go, folks. All those little ears bite in. Oh, look at that. It's absolutely eating the wood. That's insane. That's really good. I like that. Boom. A little bit of twist on it. But it's doing its job. Let's have a look. Yep, that's a pretty clean hole. That is a clean hole. Really smooth edges where those little ears there just guide it through. But I'm pleased so far. Oh, it's nice and warm. So, this is the plan. Over here, I have, it's not finished yet, but this is my kind of wood carving workshop. I've got some, uh, just a simple frame there with some hazel hurdle or hazel wattle panels on the top and then a tarp over that and then some bracken debris on top of that to make it look a bit better. So it's fully waterproof underneath. We've got some back panels there, but I like the airflow to be able to come in, especially in summer now. What I'm gonna do is use the auger and make a few small rails here, more for decorative purposes, but just to also test out this auger. This bit's usually fairly messy. Doesn't usually do a clean bit, clean cut all the way through. It's just the way hand augers work. But, yes, a hole has been made. Please with that. Up with a knife. Well, we have a hole. A pretty clean one at that. All we need is a peg now, for example, like the end of the auger, to go in there and through the other piece of wood to wedge it wedge it together. Obviously that's a big diameter hole for this kind of size wood. Normally I'd use probably the half inch auger here. Uh, so that it wouldn't affect the structural integrity of the wood, but I figure we come out to test the auger, didn't we guys? So we've got to test it. But I'm pleased with that, let's do another one. It's pretty awesome, you can actually see these flukes here pulling the wood out of a hole that's been cut by the blade, if you watch that bit. Here, this bit coming out now, it pulls it, see? And it just guides it out of the hole and it's always constantly pulling wood away. It's working its way up the kind of corkscrew, which is enabling those cutting blades to keep cutting. Otherwise they'd just be cutting the bits of broken wood all the time. Such a simple yet awesome design. And we've just broken through hole number two. Handle, you know, hand augers are always quite aggressive in the, their cut. They're not, they're not kind of tidy. But I guess that's because they, maybe because they rotate as less than a power drill would have so many RPMs compared to your hand that it would just, you know, be going like that, it would just clear, clear the hole really smooth. Whereas a hand auger, and if you look at the thread, it's much wider the thread on that than it would be on a, on a drill bit, which would be really close together. So it would make a much smoother hole.
as if one ant's nest wasn't enough over there, we have a rival colony. Ow. <laughs> Bastard. Totally different ant's nest. That means there's a new queen in there. And that means these two are at war. Which also means I'm in the death zone. So I think you can get the gist of what I'm doing here with the rails. The wood, I've just basically made a little notch, just taken off that round section so that it can sit more flush to the pole here, the horizontal beam. The difficulty being is that, just like that, sorry, um, is that where I'm drilling the hole with a one inch auger bit, anywhere you drill holes near the ends of wood, it's likely to split open. In hindsight, it, it, it has split a bit there, but because these are decorative, they're not structural, you know, it's okay and it's holding. But in hindsight, what I would have done is had a longer piece of wood, still chamfered it off, drilled the hole in there, it's less likely to split, drilled the hole in there, and then cut the ends off. And that would have made it, that, that would stop it from splitting. The only reason it's splitting is because there's no resistance at the top of this wood. So as this bites in, wood has to go somewhere and it tends to make a weak point and a crack in the ends. Every day's a school day, we learn lessons all the time, but I'm gonna crack on doing it this way because it seems to be holding, um, but I'm gonna get some food on first because I'm past, we're now 2.30 in the afternoon, past food time, so I wanna get fire going and then we'll come back and finish this. It's good though, I'm enjoying the auger.
lunch is served. Something different to what I normally do. Uh, a bit of chorizo, chorizo, however you guys say it. Um, some king prawns with, well, a, a, a concoction, little mix that I put together. I'll put that in the description below, the spice mix. And then some coriander on top or cilantro, do you call it? Cilantro, you guys across the pond. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice change to the norm. Mm. Whilst I was letting the fire get to the right temperature, I did make a little chopping block. It's more for carving, really. Just stuck some legs on it again, using the auger. Um, just tapered off some couple of legs, made a sort of tripod out of them, hit those in, and then now I've got a carving block that's just here at waist height so that the next piece of wood that I'm working on or carving is I don't have to bend over so much. Uh, this one is probably a little bit too high where that log is, I don't know, three feet? No, two and a half feet. And really, I only need it to be about that big. So log is definitely too long, but it does the job and I can always lower those legs if I need to or get a big silky out and just chop through this big log, which would be quite a task, but we could do it. Short one this week, apologies guys, I know it's not a full sort of overnight video, build video or something that you're used to, but I wanted to get out and I wanted to test the auger that Alec made. Alec, if you're watching, thanks so much for making me that. Um, I'm sure it will get some good use in the future with more builds and things like that. But um, yeah, I appreciate all you guys watching and I've got a few things to say actually. What did I need to say? Um, okay, I'm going to two exposition shows, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to two this year. There's the Great Outdoors Festival, which I believe is 6th to the 9th of August. Both these shows are in the Midlands in the UK, near Birmingham area. Yeah, Great Outdoors Festival, 6th to the 9th of August. And then the Bushcraft Show is uh, the bank holiday in August. So what's that, 27th, 26th, 27th, um, over the bank holiday. Uh, if you guys want to come say hi and chat to me, um, I will have a stall there or a stand. And I'll have loads of the TA Trekker backpacks. This is why I'm not putting them on the site just yet. And all my pack pouches and just all the TA gear, official gear. Uh, I'm going to have a stand there. And it'd be great to come and meet some of you guys face to face. I've been to uh, some of the shows before. And it's been a really good opportunity to actually meet you. And, and just, um, you know, you guys tell, telling me some of your stories and some of your favourite videos and things like that. So really looking forward to seeing, hopefully, quite a few of you there this year. If you want discounts on the tickets... I think the, TA, uh, the Great Outdoors Festival have given you guys a 20% discount, I want to say, TA20. Um, links are in the description to that, and I believe there's a discount code coming through for the Bushcraft Show as well. So just keep an eye out, guys. I'll keep you updated on Instagram and um, Facebook, as well as on here on YouTube in the community section. Just links are in the description, like I say. The other thing is I've got a big trip coming up this year in August. It's a busy month, and it's for a very good cause. I'm going on a probably four or five day canoe trip with a bunch of guys on YouTube uh, and we're basically trying to raise money for the Alzheimer's Society. It's by a guy called Ant or Ant Survive the Night is his YouTube channel. His dad sadly recently got diagnosed with Alzheimer's and those of you who know or have been around someone who's suffered from the disease, it's, um, it's really not nice and it can tear apart families uh, and it's a very difficult thing to process it's not just the person suffering from it but it's also the people around them so it's a very very horrible disease and we're going to try and raise as much money as we can by paddling the the great glen it's called where we use part of the caledonian canal essentially it is from it's up in scotland and it's from the west to the east of scotland so we start in fort william and we're going to paddle all the way up to inverness it's going to be an epic trip it's mostly open water lock canoeing so it's going to be fairly brutal if the winds are up hopefully you guys will enjoy us suffering for the five four or five days that it will take it might have to take longer if the weather's bad um, but i'm going to be filming that and documenting that on my youtube channel um, big shout out to all the guys who were on the trip as well i'm going to put links to them in the description so you can see who i'm going with uh, but the main thing is please if you can find it in your hearts um, just donate a little bit of money towards the Alzheimer's society um, i'm going to put a link to ant's donation page in the description below so and i'll pin it in the comments as well so please head on over to that link and just um the, the guys have done really well to raise money so far um and yeah i'd really appreciate it as i'm sure ant would really appreciate it as well uh thank you to those that do donate and we'll um yeah i'll keep reminding you guys up until the trip when it's coming 
about middle of August, so I'd be really, really grateful if you could, um, yeah, help donate towards the cause. But that's it for now, so I'm gonna see, hopefully, some of you at the shows. Um, I am getting a bit sick of the buggy woodlands, I've gotta to, got to admit, it's been pretty unbearable today with these ants everywhere, mosquitoes everywhere. We're about to come into another heat wave in the UK, which is about time, because we've had two weeks of rubbish. And um, I think I'm gonna hit the coast, guys, to be honest. I think it's time for some camping trips, a uh, little bit less of the bushcraft for the moment, just for a week or two, and um, we'll hit up some camping trips and also the Defender and start getting out in that and doing some, some camping in that, because I've got some stuff which I filmed already and I can't wait to show you, so yeah, let's get out, let's go camping. Hope you guys are getting out there. If you're not in lockdown, I hope you're able to do some things to entertain yourselves, but if you are, just hope you're enjoying yourself and just make the most of it. And um, yeah, I appreciate all of you guys who are watching and supporting the channel. And new subscribers and old, thank you. And I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Take care.